Hi, this is episode one of a series I'm going to be doing. It's called Dragon Ball Lore Explained. I am going to break down the lore of some of the lesser known parts of Dragon Ball and give them their own moment of spotlight. To start, we have the history of the Saiyan race. Let's begin. The very beginning of the recorded history of the Saiyan race takes us 238 years before age. The Civil War of Sadala. The Saiyans were residing on their home planet Sadala while they were in the middle of a civil war. Not much is known about this war, but we know it was a group of good Saiyans versus the evil Saiyans we know in the main series. These good Saiyans were far more civilized than their opposition. They simply wanted to build upon themselves and their planet, living a healthy lifestyle of training to fulfill the natural warrior instinct of the Saiyans. But this other group were complete savages. They gave in to the instinctual violence of the race. They wanted to fight, conquer, kill, and repeat. A group of six good Saiyans became a very important part of the rebellion against the evil Saiyans, but we only know one of their names, Yamoshi. Yamoshi and his five comrades made leaps and bounds in this rebellion, but that all changed when Yamoshi's five comrades were killed. This angered Yamoshi a great amount, causing him to become the first ever Super Saiyan. He fought valiantly against the evil Saiyans, but the greater numbers of the evil Saiyans managed to overpower the Super Saiyan and kill him in the end. After this, Yamoshi's spirit never went to the afterlife. Instead, the legend of the Super Saiyan God was created. Yamoshi's spirit wandered the universe looking for six new Saiyans to emerge who would be worthy of the power of the Super Saiyan God, which would eventually be Goku and his friends. Shortly after Yamoshi's death, the good Saiyans were all killed, and these evil Saiyans continued to live their lifestyle of savagery. The Saiyan Tuffle War The continued rule of the evil Saiyans proved to be a massive mistake, because at an unknown year, the Saiyans' lifestyle resulted in the destruction of planet Sadala. But a group of surviving Saiyans were able to escape the planet by ship, and drift in space until age 550 when they made their way to planet Plant. They landed on the planet, but it was already preoccupied. There was a species already on planet Plant called the Tuffles. They were a peaceful and technologically advanced race of people. They didn't tell the Saiyans to go away. They instead allowed them to live on the outskirts of the planet, where the Saiyans began to build primitive villages where they practically started over. There was a nice grace period of 170 years until age 720 where things took a massive turn. The Saiyans had evolved over these years and became a smarter and more advanced society, resulting in them creating a monarchy system. One king ruled and his son would be the prince who would later take his place. They functioned this way for a long time until King Vegeta III rose to power. He was a strategic genius, but he was still blinded by his Saiyan instinct for conquering and decided that he wanted to make the Saiyan race something greater. He began to start a revolution against the Tuffles, declaring that the Saiyan people were tired of living in filthy villages, and he commenced a great war against the Tuffles that would last a long and gruesome 10 years. The Tuffles had proven to be a great match for the Saiyans, they were lacking in the realm of physical strength, but their technology allowed for very powerful armies to be used in the fight. King Vegeta kept his persistence for all 10 years until something happened that turned the tide of the war massively. Something that only occurred once every 100 years on planet Plan suddenly happened. A full moon. And as we know, Saiyans are practically werewolf space monkeys, so you can imagine what happened next. Every Saiyan warrior on the planet transformed into great apes. They grew massively in size and their power increased tenfold. They launched their attack on the Tuffles and managed to drive them to extinction in a single night. The Saiyans had finally completed their conquest and they decided to give the planet a new name. They called it Planet Vegeta in honor of their king that had brought them to this dominance over the planet. The Saiyans instantly began to build their empire, using whatever technology they could salvage from the Tuffles. And after a few years, they built an incredibly advanced society over what used to be a war zone. They kept the previous monarchy system, and King Vegeta had a son, Prince Vegeta, who was a prodigy, and was destined to be the next king of the Saiyans. But all of this changed when King Cold decided to show up. He had seen the power and potential of the Saiyans, and decided to recruit them to his empire. They would conquer planets for him, and in return, they would get riches, better technology, and a lot more. 
King Vegeta decided that the Saiyans would join the Cold Empire. After all, conquering and destroying was what the Saiyans were good at. It was the golden opportunity. And knowing King Vegeta, he definitely had plans to overthrow King Cold as well. They took the deal, and for a year, all was well until King Cold revisited Planet Vegeta to announce his retirement. He told him that his son Frieza would be taking over as Emperor of the Universe, and immediately after that, everything changed for the Saiyans. Frieza was pure evil, and the Saiyans slowly began to realize that Frieza saw them as mere pawns in his game. All he wanted was to own everything, to conquer the entire universe, and anything that might be beyond. Around five years went by, and Frieza began to learn of Saiyan lore, and he heard about the ancient legend of the Super Saiyan. He just assumed it was myth, but deep down he felt somewhat frightened by the idea of this Super Saiyan. He had no idea how powerful it could be. Two more years went by before Frieza simply couldn't handle the idea of it anymore. He decided that he was going to destroy all of the Saiyans to rule out any possibility of them overthrowing him. But there was one Saiyan that went by the name of Bardock that seemed to notice something wrong with Frieza. He had his suspicions about him for a long time and decided to start a revolution. He sent his son Kakarot to a faraway planet called Earth in a space pod, just in case. If the Saiyans lost this fight, he didn't want his son to die with them. He gathered many Saiyan comrades and launched an attack on Frieza. This became the Saiyans' third, final, and quickest war all at once. Frieza killed Bardock and all of his comrades with relative ease and destroyed all of Planet Vegeta. It's very ironic how the Saiyans' crave for power was the very thing that led to their end. But there's a problem. They're not extinct. Frieza did a very sloppy job of eradicating the Saiyans, and several survivors remained. Kakarot survived because, as stated before, his father Bardock sent him away before the final fight. He then went on to land on Earth, take the name Goku, and cause Frieza some problems later on. Prince Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, and two unnamed Saiyans who most likely died were off-world on a mission at the time. They were then lied to about how Planet Vegeta was destroyed. Frieza told them that it was an asteroid to keep the Saiyans working for him, and it worked. Vegeta's younger brother Tarpal had been off planet for most of his life, as he was banished by his father when he was a young child, because he lacked the skills needed to be a Saiyan warrior, meaning Frieza never knew of his existence, causing him to survive. Broly and Paragus were banished to a faraway planet called Vampa, as Broly's power level was massive when he was just a baby. King Vegeta found this out and sent him away in fear that he might be too strong. He was insecure about the idea of Broly being stronger than his son. Broly lived through the destruction of the planet, completely undetected on this faraway world. This about concludes the history of the Saiyans. I could go on about the survivors, but I'd just be retelling the events of the anime. Thank you for watching my video this far. Please like, subscribe, you know, all the things. And if you enjoyed the first installment of this series, leave a comment letting me know, and I'll make sure to make more like this one. Bye.